Thank you for tuning into this video. You may never have heard of the term a knit or a weld line before, but rest assured the plastics industry knows a lot about knit or weld lines. This line occurs when two flow fronts meet and there is then an inability of the two or more flow fronts to knit or weld or join together. This is exactly what happens when you place uncured composite on top of cured composite. We're always hoping that the two composites will bond and join together, but until we started using micro CT, and now this mold that I've developed, we had no idea that these knit or weld lines were actually very common in our dental restorations, especially those that have been incrementally filled and incrementally light cured. To demonstrate this in the video, I'm going to use Tetric Prime and Tetric Power Fill and this custom mold that I've developed. Here we can see me filling the mold. I'm going to light cure each increment using the Blue Phase G4 curing light. And then I'm going to place another layer of composite. I'm going to light cure that again and then another layer of composite and light cure that again. I'm now going to place the final increment and I'm going to light cure that for 10 seconds over each of the proximal boxes. When I open the mold and have a look at what I just produced, I can see the knit lines between each layer of composite. To make these lines more easily visible, I've placed a blue stain on the surface of the composite, and now you can clearly see the join between each increment of composite. Now we never knew that these knit lines were present until we started doing micro CT or until we used this mold, which allowed us to look down the side of the restoration and also at the bottom of the restoration. Now for a comparison, I'm going to use Tetric Power Fill. Because this is now a monoblock construction of a single increment of composite, I'm not expecting to see any knit lines here. Now what you'll see here is that I'm placing the material in bulk, and I shall cure the material in bulk for 10 seconds over each of the proximal boxes to completely cover the composite. This is a much faster technique than placing the composite incrementally and light curing each increment. Despite the shorter curing time and the fact that we place this in one increment, you can see that the material is cured even at the bottom of the proximal boxes. Here we can see a close-up and there are no knit lines in this restoration. Now I'd like to point out that just because the composite says it's a bulk fill material doesn't mean you can fill all cavities in just one increment. In order to obey the instructions for use, you may still have to fill the cavity in two increments. And this may introduce a knit line. However, there'll be far fewer increments if they are placed in bulk compared to if they were placed in two millimeter thick increments. When we flip the restorations over and we look at the bottom of the restorations, again we can see where the knit lines are present. The bond strengths to the tooth may be less in this area, and this may cause post-op sensitivity. Here we can see an image of many restorations that have been incrementally placed and light cured. These were not placed using Tetric Prime, but instead they were placed with a different composite. So you can see that these knit lines can occur between any incrementally filled and light cured composite where you're trying to join uncured material to cured material. If you use a bulk filling material such as you see in the image below, there is less likelihood of producing a knit line as compared to the image you see above where there are many knit lines present. Now, as you can imagine, this is an area of ongoing research for me and many others as well. So please stay tuned for more developments on how to avoid knit lines in your composite resin restorations and also in your 3D printing. Thank you very much for listening. As always, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me. Here is my email address. And please do look at some other videos of mine that describe the use of this MOD mold for teaching purposes.